Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne. We're taking a look at Hypothesis. I wanted to put together a short video to take a look at how uh, to use this tool. This is very important in my work and also in my classes. Uh, so if you go to search for Hypothesis or go to this address, you can pull up the main web page for Hypothesis. Um, just to get us started, you're gonna go in and you're gonna uh, create an account for yourself. It'll walk you th through everything. So if I go to get started, it's going to have me sign up for a free account. I already have an account, so you're going to need to go through that process. Um, then you're going to go in. I use Chrome, so I use the add-on for Chrome. You can use other browsers, uh, but for most of my work, I use Chrome and, and choose Chrome based upon uh, my use of uh, Chromebooks. So it's going to add an extension. An extension is basically like a little plug-in or, or a program that runs in the browser. So I'm going to click on add the extension. It's downloading a little file um, that's going to ultimately be opened up by my browser. One of the reasons why I like Hypothesis is that you can mark up and annotate documents in the browser. So you can mark up web pages. So for those of you that print out, uh, you know, text or you read and highlight and mark up and and annotate text uh, this gives you the opportunity to do that in your browser so you can read online and mark up content as you read online and sort of keep track of uh, what you're learning and where you're reading it and you can have discussions about text baked right into the browser so i installed the I installed the extension for Hypothesis. It loads up this page. It basically lets me know that it's running right now. So if I look, here is my little browser button for Hypothesis, this piece right here. It lets me know that it's active. Um, so if I come over here, I can see an overview, and I have posts about this that I'll share with the video. So if I click on this, I can see that I'm already signed into Hypothesis right now. So you need to create your own uh, account for Hypothesis, save it there, uh, and then use that to log into Hypothesis. So here's why I like Hypothesis. So if I go in and I click on that main page, you know, if I click on Hypothesis, I can go in, I can activate it, I can turn it off. If I look at the main page, I can see all of my annotations over time. So I can see that I read this, a couple pieces about transcripts, I looked at the future of job training, and I can go back and I can see my annotations and share those out. I can tag the annotations over time, but I basically have one page where I can see all of the things that I've marked up over time. For that, me, that's nice. I can uh, save it almost like a bookmarking tool. When I go in to mark up a page, so this is my blog. This is a recent post that I have set up. Uh, I have Hypothesis baked into my site, so it automatically loads as I load my page. But if I want to mark up a new page, I can turn on Hypothesis. Obviously, I don't need to because it's already baked into my site. But if I want to, I can find a piece of text that I want to mark up. I can select the text. I'm going to ignore this for right now. That's a part of my website also. But what I can do is click on Annotate. When I click Annotate, this sidebar will slide out and I'll have different annotations that I can add. So you can see up here, this is my account. I can see when I marked this up. I have the option to modify some of the elements of my markup. I can see the text that I selected. So if I don't like that, I can go back and reselect something else. I can add a note to this. I can uh, continue on discussion. Now, a couple different things that are important to uh, think about right now. If I want to publicly share this, for most of my classes, I define, I, I tell you at the beginning of the class if I want this to be public or private. Um, so this is where you basically indicate, do you want this public, private, um, or if you've been added to a group for one of my classes, a private group, uh, then you would basically mark that out there. If you post things publicly, you have to add a tag. So for many of my classes, I want students to add CFC Edu, um, and you'll see I put in CFC Edu, and it'll add it there. 
I can also say that this is all about, this post is about reading, this post is about uh, summer learning. So if I wanted to share that out, I can now say post to public. So now the nice thing is that I have this markup, this annotation, all I do is highlight it. I added a note, uh, I tagged it. So now I can, if I want to, I can go back and edit this. I can delete it. I can share it out. Um, I can go in and respond to this. So if someone else sees this note, they can respond to something that I said here uh, and I can share this out. This is one of the powerful things I've been doing in my own blogging is if I want to cite something that I read online, I'll go in and I'll grab this clip right here, this link. And if I go up to a new page, this is kind of cool. I can share this link in a blog post or a publication, share the link. And what it will do is it'll take my reader when they click to that spot in the text. So this is a very powerful way to cite other work that you read online. So instead of just bringing someone to a blog post or a Wikipedia page, I can bring them directly to the link that I highlighted. So that's that link that I shared out there. A couple of other things here I want to take a look at. So if I look at this note that I added here, once again, is the highlighted text. Here's the note that I added. Um, I can see the tags that are there. I can reply. If I click on the tag, one of the reasons why I want students to add that CFC edu tag is now we can look back over time and we can see all of the other people that have added that CFC edu tag. So we can have a discussion in our classes based upon what we're reading together. So very important, especially if you're in my classes, add that tag so that we can see what other people are all documenting and what we're annotating and marking up. So one of the last things I want to take a look at with hypothesis is sometimes it's difficult because, you know, if we're reading a, a web page, so if I go to Wikipedia, it's very easy to find a, a piece of text. I can pull things from newspaper uh, articles. I can pull them from blog posts. I can grab anything from Wikipedia. Uh, so this isn't really help because this is something I cited, I tweeted out about Wikipedia. Uh, but basically I can find anything from Wikipedia, anything from online. So this is from the Wikimedia blog. This is not one of my websites, but let's say I want to cite this in my work. I can go in, I can select this. Let me turn on hypothesis. So I turn on, I click the button, turn on hypothesis. And now you can see that it's opening up here on the side. I can see if other people have made any annotations, they have not. So I can select a piece of text here. I don't really see a difference between annotate and highlight. Um, if you click highlight instead of annotate, I can go back and see this and then I can still edit. And then I can add a note just as I did before. Um, once again, if I want to uh, tag this, I need to tag it in order to post it and make it public. Um, and then once you do that, then you can share this thing out and use it as a citation. So you can mark up and annotate anything that you want to. It's important to, uh, I don't see a difference really in highlighting and annotating. Um, I now just go to the annotation side primarily because it makes it easier for me to quickly get in, add a note, tag it and share it out. And once again, as I said, I've been increasingly using hypothesis as a way to read online, search and sift and synthesize as I'm reading, and then use those links in hypothesis in my blog posts. So that's been helpful for me. So I'm going to delete the annotation. So the last thing I wanted to talk about is for some of my classes, um, what we have a challenge with is when you have PDFs. So many times in our classes, we'll give you a PDF to research, uh, to use in your reading and use in your research. And it can sometimes be a challenge because uh, we want to use hypothesis with that PDF. So if I'm in Chrome, and I click on this link for a PDF I'm using with students now, it will open up the document. Um, it will try to use hypothesis with it. So there you go. So all I did was I clicked it and I opened it up in hypothesis. 
So once again, that process was pretty simple. At times, it could be more challenging. I'm trying to trick it so that I can get it to not work. Yeah, so it's working for me. Um, if it does not work for you, what I've done in the past is, so I mean, here is this PDF. What I can do is I see that Hypothesis is, uh, is working. I had planned in making this video that Hypothesis was not going to work for me, and it's working very well. So, um, so I can see annotations and markups that people have made over time. So you can see students I've had in the past have already marked this up, and it's pretty simple. You basically, once again, highlight the text. I hit annotate. I can mark this up over time. So I have students leave commentary in the text. They can post this to public. For this, I had them post to private groups. Um, that I'm a part of so I can watch their reading and, and follow along the discussion. Um, but this is the same process as before. If you cannot get it to work, um, some of my students have indicated that it's been problematic to get Hypothesis up and running with PDFs. So the, the process to, to do that is, so if I go back to that page, There's two things to look at if it's not working for you when you're using PDFs. So if I go back and grab that PDF, one of the things that I can do is I can, uh, Chrome likes to many times open up, or at least for me, I had the settings so that it'll open up a PDF in the browser. Um, I prefer that, but for some people it doesn't. Um, so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna download that document to your desktop. So if you download it to your desktop, if you already have a PDF that you want to mark up and annotate in Hypothesis, what you can do is you can drag the document, the PDF, right into your browser. And I'll show you how to do that. Come on. So I have that same PDF on my desktop now. So I open up a new tab in Chrome. Here's the PDF that we're using. I can click and drag that into Chrome. And you can do this with any PDF. Uh, you can drag it right into your browser window. I use a new browser window. You see here, it opens up the document for me. Um, you can see here the URL, it's saying that it's pulling open a file from my desktop. What you wanna do now is you wanna go back in and click that button for hypothesis. And what you'll see is it's giving me a warning saying that it failed to load. The reason why it failed to load is you need to change one of the settings in hypothesis. And so what you do is you go up here and this is once again in Chrome, go down to more tools, go to extensions. These are all the plugins and uh, tools that I have built into Chrome. So if I go down to hypothesis, I'm going to see this is the plugin that I installed. This is what I'm using. You're going to check this thing. This is allow access to file URLs. And then that's it. You can close this out. I can go back to this document and I can reload it. And now you can see it's reloading that PDF that I dragged from my desktop. It's got the hypothesis uh, plug in there. You can see that it's already active. And over here is hypothesis again. So once again, um, Hypothesis is a great tool to be able to mark up and annotate text as you read it online. One of the benefits for me is that I can use this as a bookmarking tool. I can look at specific areas of text that I like, specific lines on a blog post or a web page that I like that I want to use in my writing. I can mark up and annotate those, and I can go back and revisit them over time. Uh, increasingly, I'm using this in my writing and my blogging and my publishing in other capacities. And the way that I'm using it is as a tool to cite. So as I read online, I'll pick a piece of text and I'll cite that piece of text. Um, and I showed you how to share the specific pieces. But then also in many of our classes, we ask that you use 
not just web pages, but sometimes you have PDFs that you will research and you'll read and you'll search and sift through online. So the easy way to do that with Hypothesis is you can drag that into your browser window, uh, turn on that setting so that you can mark it up and annotate it in Hypothesis, and then you can go in and mark up and annotate. So that's my hopefully quick things operated better than I wanted them to, and that's not a bad thing, I'm not gonna complain, but that's a quick overview of how to use Hypothesis and some of the ways that I use it in my work and my students will use it in our classes.